Hi, it's Robin. Today we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of different bread bins that I have in my collection, that is, Commodore computers with this form factor. This includes the VIC-20 that I have here, several models of Commodore 64, and even the fairly rare or unsuccessful Commodore 16. All three of those computers share the same shaped case. But there's actually quite a few variations between them, even within different models, so that's what we'll be looking at today. So I believe this is the very first use of the bread bin case. This is a Commodore VIC-20, a very early one, that has the PET-style keyboard. The shape of the keycaps and the lettering on them is very similar to that used on the Commodore PET computers, uh, with the full type rear keyboard, of course not the earlier model with the square calculator chiclet keys. So this font is considered the Microgramma Extended. It was a favorite font of Commodore and it's a favorite font of mine. Huge thanks to viewer Troy for donating this computer to me. And there's actually a whole bin of other computer stuff that I haven't even really looked at yet and probably will in a future episode. So thanks again, Troy. On the side of the VIC-20, we have a single joystick port, the on-off power switch, and this two-prong 9-volt AC power supply. All the earlier VICs used this power supply, and at some point, I believe after the Commodore 64 was introduced, a new cost-reduced board came out that actually switched over to the Commodore 64 power supply here. The back panel is the same on basically all VIC-20s, the very large cartridge port, the audio-visual port, and external RF modulators required if you want to hook it up to TV set, the serial IEC port for connecting disk drives and printers, cassette port, and the user port. Just like most Commodore computers, there's nothing on the left-hand side. This particular VIC-20 has quite a low serial number, V003736, made in USA. It has a sold and service sticker here from Audio Service Center Incorporated, which was on Algoma Street here in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. So the first variation I'm aware of is a different keyboard on some later VIC-20s, but I think this keyboard's fairly rare. This VIC-20 variation is called the Eurostyle after the Euro-style font, which in some ways is similar to the Microgramma, but it's not nearly as bold. The letters are still quite square, if we look at the Q or the O, but they are thinner. And some of the keys have very small print on them, like the Home button, Delete, Restore. I'll do some sort of split screen so that you can compare the Euro-style with the earlier microgramma. Just pause the video if you want to give it a real good study. Now obviously this case is somewhat yellowed compared to my original, but that's not the only difference here. It has the updated badge compared to the previous silver label, or is it gold? But that's not the only difference. So I put the pet style Vic next to the Euro style keyboard, and you might notice there's a significant height difference between the two. Now, I've shown this before in one of my videos about Retro Games Limited, the C64 Maxi, as some people call it. Some people were saying that they made it too big. <laughs> but in fact, all they did was modeled it after the full height C64, and we'll get to that in a bit which is the same shell as the VIC-20. But this is what surprised me. This is news to me that some VIC-20s were apparently made with the later C64 style shell. And that's why it's lower. And yeah, they both do have their rubber feet. So it's a, another shape of bread bin. Unless you know better, they look the same. Now, strangely, this VIC still has just the two-prong AC. It's not the cost-reduced one that was inspired by the C64 either. And as further proof that this is the same shell from the C64, notice this little notch right here. It's just this little rounded area here that seems to serve no purpose on the VIC-20. 
And on the pet style, it's just a straight edge. But here on my silver label C64, we can see that that notch is actually for the RF connector here. They added this little raised bit to give enough clearance, it's still barely enough, on some, some other boards. And that discovery made me search all my VIC-20s, <laughs> including this horribly yellowed one. It almost looks like it's on purpose if you just look at the top, but I think the bottom shows that, boy, it's really yellowed. This just happens to be my only other Eurostyle VIC-20, and it's got that same notch, and it's also the shorter height. But interestingly, it's got the updated power supply using the C64 power supply. So it's a cost-reduced board in there. And it's another one with a Made in the USA sticker. Now I'm not ruling out that maybe the board got swapped or maybe the cases got changed around. But on the flip side, it wouldn't surprise me if these are all factory original. I think enough people have remarked that Commodore would just use whatever parts were on hand to get another computer out the door. And consistency was not a primary objective for them. This is back on my first Euro style. VIC-20. I want to note, you can see there's some significant extra yellowing here above the vents, and I believe that's due to the heat coming out of this computer when it was operational. These VICs with the 9-volt AC power had the transformer inside. As a result, they ran a lot hotter than Commodore 64s or later cost-reduced VIC-20s, and the combination of running the hot 9 volt AC VIC with just two ventilation ports in the smaller C64 case, I think caused that yellowing. It's even got some extra damage there. That might be partly due to heat, making it uh, more brittle. Full height VIC 20s, this is the pet one again, have actually four vents. You can see them here one, two, three, and four. And they just have a little bit more clearance in them too, which I think those extra vents were required because of how hot these ran. But they didn't worry about that when they started putting some VIC-20s in Commodore 64 sized shells. Okay, and finally we've got a VIC-20 with the final C64 keyboard, which is a taller, thinner font. That's not as square as the previous ones. I've read that it's similar to Helvetica Narrow, and I find it a lot more uniform. Now notice, even though it has the newer keyboard, it still has the older silver gold label. Depends which way the light shines on it, whether that looks silver or gold to me. And this one is still just a 9 volt older board. Okay, and then finally... <laughs> Here's the VIC-20 that I've shown on my channel lots of times before. Whenever I do an episode about the VIC-20, I use this one. And you see it's got the rainbow badge and the Helvetica keyboard, C64 keyboard. And it's got the C64 power supply jack, so it's cost reduced. And just to show that they're both the same height, they're both full height compared to <laughs> my terribly yellowed computer. You see this? There's that gap there again. Okay, that's it for the VIC-20. Now moving on to Commodore 64 bread bins. This is one of the very early silver label Commodore 64s, so-called, because the badge up here is silver, and many of them have the vertical power label over here on the right, while it's across the top on later ones. You'll see that later. And the back is very similar on these expansion port, cartridge port. Channel selector, RF output, and that's again that little rounded part here that we saw in those couple VIC-20s. AV output, these early C64s just had a 5-pin audio-visual port, while later ones went for an 8-pin for the improved S-video type output, separated video. IEC port, cassette port, and user port. And if you look carefully, there's actually a line here, and I believe that's from where they took a VIC-20 mold and added this new insert to cover up this section, because on the VIC-20 this is all cartridge port. 
This one has a serial number starting with C, which is the Canadian line. And they put a Made in Canada sticker. I think it, they're using the same labels that said Made in USA, but these ones with the C, starting with just a C are Made in Canada. If they start with CA, they're Made in the US, I think a California line. And the silver label just has the two vents on it. And that's because it is the lower profile C64 case, which makes this next one interesting. So this has got the newer rainbow badge and the power label is above instead of at the right. And it's got the updated video AV port with eight pins, but it's got four vents on it. And so that means this newer C64 is the higher full height case, taller than the silver label. I would have thought that the early silver label C64 would have a VIC-20 size case, like the taller, and then later ones would have the shorter one, but nope, it's the opposite. And so that C64 has a serial number starting with P, which I believe is from the Westchester, Pennsylvania production line. So, so far all the C64s have had the dark brown keys with gray function keys. So here's another variation that has the orange function keys. So this is just the same as the VIC-20 keyboards. So you might think somebody's just swapped a VIC-20 keyboard into here, but I'm almost certain this is from the factory. So it's another one with a P serial number, should be made in Pennsylvania, USA. But here's the reason why I think it's from the factory. This is what sometimes is called the Canadian C64, the Calgary Olympics C64. I don't know if this was only sold in Canada. I think it might have been. The box features a nice landscape painting of Calgary, Alberta and a painting of a Commodore 64 with orange function keys on it. And even though it has a Made in USA sticker on it here, it also has a big Canadian maple leaf. It says this product meets or exceeds all Canadian Standards Association's requirements. And it mentions here Commodore Business Machines Limited in Ontario. And this symbol here, this is the official mark of Canadian Olympic Association 1967. Commodore is the official supplier of computer systems to the Canadian Olympic Association. So I'd love to know more about how this worked out, but did Commodore do a special run of Commodore 64's using up surplus VIC-20 keys for the Canadian Olympic Committee? I don't know. The Calgary Olympics didn't happen until 1988, but of course Calgary was awarded the Olympics years before that, so this was probably from around 1984, and this was part of the marketing. Did the Canadian Olympic Committee get a cut of these, or did they just get free Commodore 64s in their offices, or what? I don't know. Anyway, neat little bit of history. There may be other Commodore 64s with factory installed keyboards with orange function keys. I'm not sure, but this seems to be one definite source of it. And uh, yeah, the serial number on the box does match the serial number on that bread bin with the orange keys. Another variation is this Swedish C64. I've shown this before. It's from my friend Maker Valp, who is a super talented programmer. Now this one just has stickers on the keys but apparently earlier they did have proper keycaps made with the Swedish symbols on them. But probably that became too expensive when the margins got so thin on later C64s and they just switched to putting stickers on them. But the reason I'm showing this one is because on the back panel it has this extra insert here. And I think you can see where the insert was put in the mold. And it says here, memory expansion. HL high low, even though that doesn't apply to the Swedish one because I think they didn't have uh, control over the RF output. Uh, there, RF video serial 
cassette, and user port. Now, Adrian Black made a video about three or four different bread bins he had. Uh, I think it was about three years ago he released that, and that was an excellent video. But it was interesting that at least one of his bread bins had this row. I think out of all the bread bins I have, this is the only one I have that has this plastic molded labeling above the ports on the back. I looked through every bread bin I have, including some ones I'm not showing here today, and I just can't find that on any. Some people seem to have plenty of them. They don't seem to be especially rare, but for me here in Canada, they are very rare. So I guess only certain production lines ended up with those particular molds or the, those inserts for the molds for the labeling. Actually, that's not completely true. I will show you one more computer that has labeling in there shortly. And I figure I might as well show the full size, the C64 Maxi, as it's called, because they really did do a good job of replicating the bread bin look. And I pointed this out in one of my the C64 comparison videos, but some people had said like they made the C64 the wrong size or whatever, but no, they just copied the C64 case, that you know, bread bin that I already showed. So here it is compared to that Swedish C64. You can see it is taller than that. But if I put it next to one of my other rainbow badge C64s, you see they're exactly the same height. And there's other bread bin variations that I don't have. There's one called the Dreen Commodore 64. That's D-R-E-A-N, which was made for the South American market. There was the, I think it was for selling a million Commodore 64s. They made some gold ones, <laughs> which, you know, I've certainly never seen. In Germany, they had two other models of bread bins. One is the Aldi, which has the regular kind of brown beige case, but with a white keyboard. Jan Beta made a great video about his. And there's also the C64G which is a white bread bin with white keys. Both those computers are kind of like 64C internals, 64C keyboards, but inside a bread bin case. Okay, and again, I'm only talking about bread bin variations here. Of course, there's other variations like the 64C. Okay, and the final bread bin we'll look at today is the Commodore 16. So it's a bread bin, but obviously in a black shell. The VIC-20 and C64 have identical keyboard layouts. The C16 looks similar, but when you look closer, there's quite a few changes. Like they moved the home key here, they got rid of restore, they put the pound and the equals keys down here, moved the cursor keys up here. Strangely, the function keys go F1, 2, F3, help, and then F4, F5, F6, F7 are on the bottom, while the C64 is F1, F2, F3, F4, and so on. So people often say, why don't they add a C16 or plus four mode to the C64? Well, the reason they add the VIC-20 mode is because the keyboard is identical. So it's an identical experience. I think using a C16 on the C64 with all the wrong keyboard mappings would be the most frustrating experience ever. And it's not possible to just like fully remap <laughs> to match the C64. There's games, the stuff would break. Anyway, that's why. And, and same with why don't they put a Commodore Pet mode in the C64? Well, same thing. The keyboard is so different. Games would be horrible to play without a number pad. And, and to look at the differences here, the C16 has these terrible DIN connectors for joysticks. They're no better. They're just different. Probably is just to sell more peripherals. It's nice that it does have a proper reset button on it. On off switch. And it just has a single DC power supply input, which is nice in theory. And on the back, there's the memory expansion. It's basically also a cartridge port. Oh, I thought I dusted this, but. So you see that the C16 does have this insert along the back here too. RF and high low. The video port is the same. And fortunately, the serial. They did keep that the same, so you can still use uh, other Commodore disk drives. The cassette port, though, they changed to a DIN. And that's it. There's nothing <laughs> this section. Actually, you can see here where they filled in 
This was the user port on the C64 mold. I think they filled it. The C16 doesn't have its badge. I don't know. Maybe it never had one. But I have another C16 here that I think is identical. Oh, except for the whiteout. Rare. <laughs> but it does have the badge on it. It's quite shiny. There we go. Originally, there's going to be this whole 264 series of computers and it ended up being just the C16 and the plus four that made it to market. Model 16, power 9 volt, 1 amp. And you see there's the serial number, so that was made in California. Probably. Made in USA anyway. Okay, and since I have the box for the C16, I thought I might as well show it. Because you might not have seen one of these before. The World's Learning Machine, I think it says. Easy to use. Learning cartridge coupon enclosed. I don't know what that learning cartridge is. I don't have it. See, originally it retailed for $149. Uh, Canadian. This is a Canadian tire sticker up here. Uh, but it got marked all the way down to $49.99 before somebody bought it. Uh, I actually got this one, I think, at a tea pug meeting down in Toronto one year uh, off of somebody. Thank you, whoever it was. From the world leader in microcomputers, the first step into the world of computing is a Commodore computer. So, yeah, 16K computer, and they're still encouraging you to buy a data set, even though this is, what, 1984. So they had the, uh, the black matching cassette drive, but it just has that... Uh, DIN connector, so that's a pain. And they even released a MPS-803 in black, I guess. I never saw one of those in person. There's the product specs. Memory expansion port, RF jacks, the game ports, joysticks. <laughs> the reset button. The power socket. <laughs> the... <laughs> it's actually really funny that they labeled them with the... <laughs> Vuzz. <laughs> and here on the other side, you can see it's clear that they decided to market it as a learning machine. It's covered up with that Canadian Tire label on it. By touring and understanding the Commerce 16 keyboard, programming, presumably, becomes the next logical step. So they're obviously pitching it as a very low-end computer for learning for kids. All right, so that's a look at my collection of bread bin Commodore computers, VIC-20, C64, C16. And unfortunately, there's some models I just don't own, but I'll put links in the descriptions to uh, that Yon Beta video, and uh, Adrian's Digital Basement did that good video about it, and maybe some other links too, so check that. Thanks to my patrons for their support. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Computer.